Good morning. How y'all doing? Thank y'all for being here. First, I want to welcome you all to the here to Tucson's Father Kino statue celebrates the three statues for three nations. Thirty years ago, in 1991, the city of Tucson gave Father Sibiru Kino, hometown of Seguno, Italy, a replica of the statue of Padre Kino. Another point we will celebrate is that in 2020, Pope Francis declared Padre Kino as a venerable person. The next step is beatification before being canonized as a saint. So we got some great things going on right now. Now it's my honor to present the Knights of Columbus Honor Guard. Bill Barrett, Frank Hairpin, Robert Roll, Jay Isley, Larry Powers, Gilbert Larinaga, Ted Burgess DeSantis, Antonio Otero, Jesse Limon, Dan Santa Maria, Mark Ziski, Sean Helpin, and Brian Sayers will lead us. Please stand as we present the colors. They'll present the colors and then we'll go into the program and I'll introduce Rosie Garcia. Okay. We do the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, you can have your seats. I want to thank Jesse Soto and the Parks and Rec crew, Mr. Zuniga, for also being here and setting up this nice little area for us in the city of Tucson. Okay, so Governor Ducey sent a letter of accommodation for this event. Rosie Garcia will now read it, who is the president and the historian of the Kino Heritage Society, will read the governor's letter. Rosie. if I should have my sunglasses or my readers. <laughs> I think I'll take the readers. Okay. Welcome, good morning to everyone. Buenos dias a todos. Buon giorni a tutti la gente di Segno Italia. Uh, from the state of Arizona, commendation, be it known to all that Douglas Ducey, governor of the state of Arizona, do hereby offer my sincere Congratulations to the Kino Heritage Society in recognition of its 30th anniversary of the Kino statue presentation to Seño Italy from Tucson, Arizona. Father Eusebio Francisco Kino was a 17th century Jesuit missionary, explorer, cartographer, rancher, and farmer. He founded 21 missions in the Pimeria Alta, which is now Northern Sonora and Southern Arizona. The Three Statues for Three Nations was created to honor the life and impact of Father Kino and are located in Tucson, Arizona, Magdalena, Sonora, Mexico, and Seño, Italy. Oh, I should say Magdalena de Kino now, right? The legacy of Father Kino is an important part of Arizona's history and his contributions have influenced the people and cult culture of the Southwest. On behalf of the citizens of Arizona, I offer my sincere appreciation in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand done at the Capitol in Phoenix on this 5th day of August in the year 2021. Douglas Ducey, Governor of Arizona. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Rosie will be back later on in the program. Now it's my honor, my extinct honor, to introduce Jim Ronstadt, who was key 30 years ago with the Parks and Rec Director and helped get the statue started this movement going. So Jim, stand up, please take a bow. And Benny Young was the one who designed the frame for it. Another great city employee. Now it's my extinct honor to introduce President Bishop Emeritus Gerald Kincanis to speak. Bishop. 
He's my big fan. Thanks very much, Richard. Say good. Oh, come on. Say good. good. Say great. great. Say fantastic. fantastic. And that's what today is, isn't it? It's good, it's great, and it's fantastic. That we have our city, we have our county, we have South Tucson, we have our Italian council, we have our Mexican council, three nations and three statues. You know, we're waiting for a miracle for Father Kino. And somebody thought that Rosie's parking today was a, an example of a miracle. <laughs> yes. Or another miracle would be getting Father Greg on top of Father Kino's horse with him. <laughs> but you know, all of us are so proud of Father Kino and his heritage. And the Kino Heritage Society is here to continue to remind us of the incredible work that Father Kino did in this community and the foundations he laid. He indeed is worthy of being called blessed and called a saint because he cared for others. He was willing to leave Segno in Italy to come all the way here to Pimaria Alta, northern Mexico and southern Arizona. Sometimes I wonder as I drive around and I know Bishop Weissenberger has learned the extent of the Diocese of Tucson. I can't imagine how Father Kino did it in those <laughs> days. That's a miracle. And so today is a great day. I know uh, Congress, uh, Senate Councilman uh, Fimbres has done a great job along with Rosie and so many others to make this day possible because we want to remember this great man who helped so many in our community. So say good. Good. Say great. Great. Say fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Bishop. It's always an honor to hear Bishop speak. Now it's my honor to introduce Adelita Grijalva, the supervisor, and Rick Scott, Pima County Board of Supervisors. Come on up. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Es un placer estar aquí. Thank you so much um, for having us. So myself and Supervisor Scott, we um, are in a little bit of an abbreviated uh, meeting schedule right now. And so we don't have another meeting until the 16th of August. And so, and so what we're going to do is we are both going to jointly go up after uh, Bishop Kakanis. I'm not sure how that went down. I don't know. But um, so we're going to be introducing a proclamation on the 16th of August. And so I'll go ahead and what is close? Close. Closer. Farther. Thank you. Well, look at you and your tech savvy. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to read about half and then I'll share with Supervisor Scott. So whereas in 1961, the state of Arizona proclaimed Father Sevio Francisco Quino straight as the Arizona's foremost pioneer, illustrious for his early missionary work, exploration, and um, cartography, and authorized the raising of private funds to fund the statue of Father Quino in the United States Capitol as one of Arizona's two heroic representatives of our nation. And whereas Father Quino, was one of the first Europeans to visit our community through publication of his maps and a result of 50 journeys exploration. He introduced the world to geography and indigenous people of Southern, Air, of Southern Desert. Whereas during the dedication ceremony in the United States Capitol on Arizona Statehood Day, February 14th, 1965, the state of Arizona presented the statue of Father Kino, which now stands as part of the National Statuary Hall of Heroes. And whereas Father Kino joined by the desert sharing Otham people, established more than two dozen missions, including to Macaquery, um, Gravavi, and San Javier del Bac during his 24 years of tireless work in today's Southern Arizona and Northern Sonora. And I have a share right there. Thank you, Supervisor Grijalva. 
Whereas three statues for three centuries was a project honoring the continuing impact of the life and labors of Padre Eusebio Francisco Quino in our Arizona Sonora borderlands and resulted in three equestrian statues being erected 30 years ago in Tucson, Magdalena, Sonora, Mexico, and Senyo, Italy, his birthplace, and which is celebrated today as three statues for three nations to honor the cultural ties created by Padre Quino's legacy, and whereas international recognition of Padre Quino's legacy of building bridges between cultures and communities has come in the form of his being declared venerable by Pope Francis in 2020 a step in the process of canonization and the consideration of the Kino missions as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And whereas this year, the Kino Heritage Society is honoring the life of Father Kino and his legacy of peace and fellowship by commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Father Kino statue, statue presentation to Senyo, Italy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Pima County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaims the month of August 2021 to be Father Eusebio Francisco Kino Month and encourages everyone to honor the life of Father Kino and his lasting legacy by visiting the Father Kino statue on Kino Boulevard here in Tucson, Arizona during the month of August 2021. Thank you very much. Thank God, Alita. Thank you, Rex. Now it's my distinct honor to introduce our city manager who will read the city of Tucson's proclamation, Mike Ortega. Thank you, council member, and good morning to everyone. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Mayor Rojina Romero was not able to make it today, so she sent me as a as a stand-in for her, but uh, she did ask me to read the proclamation that she has established. Whereas in 1961, the state of Arizona proclaimed Father Eusebio Francisco Quino as Arizona's foremost pioneer, illustrious for his, career, for his early missionary work, exploration, and cartography, and authorized the raising of private funds to place a statue of Father Quino in the United States Capitol as one of Arizona's two heroic representatives of our nation. And whereas, through the publication of his maps and as a result of his 50 journeys of exploration, Father Kino introduced the world to the geography and people of the Sonoran Desert and as the first European to visit our community. And whereas, during a dedication ceremony in the United States Capitol on Arizona Statehood Day, February 14, 1965, the state of Arizona presented the statue of Father Kino, which now stands as part of the National Statutory Hall of Heroes. And whereas Father Kino, joined by the desert sharing Odom people, established more than two dozen missions, including to Macaquery, Havavi, and San Javier del Bac, during his 24 years of tireless work in today's southern Arizona and northern Sonora. And whereas three statues for three centuries was the project honoring the continuing impact of the life and labors of Padre Eusebio Francisco Quino in our Arizona Sonora borderlands and resulted in three equestrian statues being erected 30 years ago in Tucson, Magdalena de Quino, Sonora, Mexico, and Segno, Italy, his birthplace, which is celebrated today as three statues for three nations to honor the cultural ties created by Padre Quino's legacy. And whereas international recognition of Padre Quino's legacy of building bridges between cultures and communities has come in the form of his being declared venerable by Pope Francis in 2020, a step in the process of canonization and the consideration of the Quino missions as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Whereas on this year, the Quino Heritage Society is honoring the heroic life of Father Quino and his legacy of peace and fellowship by commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Father Kino statue presentation in Segno, Italy. Now therefore, I, Regina Romero, 
mayor of the city of Tucson, Arizona, do hereby proclaim the month of August 2021 to be Father Eusebio Francisco Kino month. In this community, I encourage all citizens to honor the life of Father Kino and his lasting legacy by attending the 30th anniversary, commemorating the Father Kino statue presentation in Segno, Italy, Sunday, August 8th, 2021, before the Father Kino statue on Kino Boulevard in Tucson, Arizona. It went us here up, I here on two set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Tucson, Arizona to be affixed on this eighth day of August, 2021. Regina Romero, attested by Roger Randolph, City Clerk. Council Member. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. A great day for us. It's my pleasure to introduce Reverend Gregory Adolph, the pastor of St. Andrew the Apostle Church in Sierra Vista, who will speak about Father Kino and his missions. Father, come on up. Give him a round of applause. Please. First of all, I want to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Shel uh, Sean Helpin, who is a part of the Supreme Council of the Knights of Columbus International, and we're very honored to have him here on behalf of the Knights of Columbus across the United States and the world. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> want to honor again the Knights of Columbus, the Caballeros de Colón, who are here to honor the Caballero de Cristo, Padre Quino. It was 200 and 329 years ago this month that Padre Quino rode into Tucson, the area, for the first time, the end of August, beginning of September 1692. And while other Jesuits accused him of being a exaggerator of the uh, benefits of the area, saying that where others saw a muddy stream, he saw a beautiful river, where others saw a single tree, he saw a forest, Nonetheless, when Padre Quino looked over the valley, he said, this is the most beautiful area and it will one day support a city greater than Mexico City. Visionary. So, um, someone said, uh, what do you think he would think if he were here today? He would see that the dream that he had, the vision that he had, was perfectly fulfilled and your gathering here today, our gathering today, certainly a testimony of our appreciation of what he, the foundations he laid. It's my privilege to read the uh, letter from Bishop Edward Weisenberger, who is not able to be with us uh, this morning. Please accept my warmest welcome to this event in memory of the venerable Padre Quino. I deeply regret my inability to be present, but be assured of my remembrance in prayer. It is significant to note that today's celebration takes place while an identical celebration is being held in Italy. Padre Quino's birthplace. It is moving to note that the people separated by thousands of miles can gather together to celebrate our gratitude for the unique contributions of a holy man. Those who know the life of Padre Quino are humbled by his extraordinary talents, abilities, and zeal. He was a trailblazer, map maker, pioneer cattleman, early agricultural extension agent, and bridge builder between different peoples and cultures. Central to all these wonderful accomplishments, he was a man grasped by the love of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, which he wanted to share with all. No doubt it was the exceptional integrity of his life that gave credibility to his words of preaching. Padre Quino's enduring legacy is found today in the movements that protect the rights of native peoples and efforts to protect all people, especially those with no power, no voice, or otherwise easily overlooked. Moreover, Padre Quino's ability to find wisdom and integrity in every human being is a call for us today to build authentic community among diverse peoples that respects the dignity of all, the dignity of each. Lastly, I wish to call to mind Padre Quino's role as a peacemaker among the different native peoples of our area, as well as between the native peoples and the new immigrants his lasting endeavors to create a peace built upon mutual respect and justice reveal the power of one person to build bridges of understanding and peace. May today's events hold blessings for us all, and may the Venerable Padre Quino intercede for us now and always. Very sincerely yours in Christ, Most Reverend Edward J. Weisenberger, Bishop of Tucson. Thank you very much. Now it's my honor to represent 
President Rafael Barcelo Dorazo, the Council of Mexico, who is here to talk about Padre Quino in Mexico. Council. Good morning to everyone. I am very happy to be here, very honored to be in the presence of the local authorities that are recognizing the legacy of Padre Quino. I um, also wanted to let you know that from the Mexican side and uh, with, with our American allies, we are working on a project for the designation of the missionary route of Padre Quino as a part of the cultural uh, heritage of humankind is like by UNESCO. Uh, it's going to be perhaps a long process, but hey, Padre Quino took a longer process than, than we might took. So <laughs> yes, I am um, I'm certain. The state of Sonora is moving forward with the designation as cultural uh, heritage, uh, a state cultural heritage of the missionary route as, an, as a cultural itinerary, uh, which uh, emphasizes, of course, his um, not just his religious role, but also the very important role he had in promoting uh, agriculture and science in these lands. I, by coincidence, ended up finishing a book by Kerry Gibson called El Norte, uh, the epic and forgotten story of Hispanic North America. It, it, it's a history book that I, that I would recommend. Uh, every chapter uh, has the name of a place in, in, in the United States. And the last chapter is about Tucson. Our, and the, the two last pages of the book, just when it's about to conclude, uh, she, she talks about this, this monument today. Uh, I'm going to read, if you allow me, uh, a small fraction of what, uh, what she said about this, because she also mentioned uh, the, the, the important um, monument or statue that is in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, the statue sculpture, Julian Martinez, was then commissioned in the, in the 80s to produce a 15-foot equestrian statue of Father Eusebio Quino, considered by many to be the founder of Arizona. The priest was uh, a true symbol of the struggle for justice, his supporters claim, and he was also the patron saint of the modern Sunbelt because uh, he had imposed order through Christianity and developed the vast plains uh, with ranching and agriculture. Today, the Padre Quino statue inhabits a patch of dusty earth on a corner of Quino Parkway. She wasn't very generous in describing the place. <laughs> <laughs> he, sits, he sits up straight in its saddle, though, though his horse looks weary with its head slow, but this is what I love, but determined to finish the journey. Then she talks about the Francisco Villa statue in downtown Tucson. And uh, for the historian, uh, Geraldo Carava, who has studied tensions over how people in Tucson think about their history, um, both Villa and, and, and Kino evoke the tensions over how people in Tucson think about their history, sorry. Uh, but they have their place, he argues, and, and, and this is a quote that I want to mention. They are giant weights that hold together um, seemingly fracture geographies and communities. And I think that's the most important legacy of Kino. He put together very different worlds, and that's why we are here celebrating his legacy. And I am, uh, as a representative of the government of Mexico, I'm very happy and honored to, to be sharing with you, my American friends, this moment. Thank you. Next, our friends from Italy. Padre Quino was born in Signo, Italy in 1645. Silva Chiave, the Council General of Italy in La, from Los Angeles is here to visit with us and say a few words on behalf of Father Quino. Silvia, Ben, Benvenuto. Thank you, Council Member. I'm very happy and honored as well to be here today with you and I'm very grateful to the city of Tucson for inviting me and also to let me discover and rediscover this exceptional figure of Father Kino and his legacy. I also want to warmly thank Councilmember Fimbers for the proclamation that he personally handled me of esteem and recognition from the city on behalf of the city of Tucson. But I'm here on behalf of my uh, government and uh, specifically on, on behalf of my Minister of Foreign Affairs that uh, also 
of course endorsed the parallel ceremony that is taking place in Segno uh, and that was uh, invited but unfortunately could not come. So I will now read a message of uh, the Italian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Luigi Di Maio. I am pleased to greet you on the occasion of this ceremony, celebrating the 30th anniversary of the presentation of Father Eusebio Chini's statue in Segno. I wish to thank the Mary of Tucson, Mrs. Regina Romero, for proclaiming us to August 2021 as the Father Eusebio Francesco Chino month, thus contributing to keep his legacy alive. While of Italian origins, Father Kino is widely recognized as an Arizona pioneer and hero and is remembered not only for his missionary efforts, but also for his work as an explorer, scientist, cartographer and astronomer. It is thanks to the work of American scholars and people that in Italy we rediscovered the achievements of this Jesuit father, whose statue has been on display in the National Statuary Hall collection since 1965, proudly representing Arizona on Capitol Hill. Father Kinney was a 17th century scientist who brought together faith and rationality. Above all, he was renowned and loved for his attention to indigenous people, his battles for the respect of basic human rights, and his will to foster equal opportunities. Throughout his 24 years as a Jesuit missionary, Father Kino never ceased to contribute to the efforts to set indigenous people free, to improve their living conditions and promote their dignity, also by introducing new techniques to help diversify local agriculture. Father Kino was a pioneer of intercultural and people-to-people -people dialogue who promoted mutual understanding and solidarity. These are values that the United States and Italy both share and firmly believe in and which must always be remembered, recognized and celebrated, especially these years that marks the 160th anniversary of our diplomatic relations. A sincere grazie. Thank you to all. Thank you, Council General. Now it's my honor to reintroduce Rosie Garcia, who is the president and historian of the Kino Heritage Society. I'd like to call her up to say a few words about the and express our third thanks. Rosie, come on up. What, what do they say behind every man there's a great woman? <laughs> well, I'm going to say behind every woman there are great men. <laughs> uh, I would like to introduce you to uh, my board that has been with me for the last 11 years. Um, I know they probably weren't expecting this, but would you please come up here? Father Greg Adolph. And Father, maybe they left their mask. No, <laughs> Father Greg Adolph and Father, please come up here. And Father Chris Carbally, John Shaheen, uh, and Sister Lois. She's out of town. Um, these. Uh, these are the men that have made uh, Kino Heritage Society possible. Get to the microphone. Oh. To the microphone. Uh, this is the board of directors that has been around since 2011, 2010. We celebrated then 2011, the 300th anniversary of Father Kino. And we're still going strong, I believe. And I just want to thank you And before this uh, group and let you know that we are planning future events since uh, we are trying to promote, of course, the canonization of Father Kino here in Pima County, especially now that he's so close to being canonized. And um, so I just want to say thank you. And I also want to thank another group that has been with us since 2011, the Knights of Columbus. They're, they've always been there. And I just... 
have a, a story to share with you. In 2011, when the Archbishop of Italy was here, uh, Archbishop Bresni, Bresni, correct? Yes. Bresni. Um, we had the Knights of Columbus, and the Tucson Airport Authority said, uh, Ms. Garcia, I'm sorry, but they're not allowed with a weapon. I said, what weapon? Uh, their sword. <laughs> I said, no, that's part of the attire. I said, they must have the sword. So anyhow, I was the gossip for the la for about a week or so. They said, oh, that's the lady that was allowed to bring in weapons into the airport. <laughs> Pass the security, and that just wasn't one weapon. There, I think there were like 50 weapons. But anyhow, I just want to thank all of you. Okay, thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. And it'd be a, we miss if we didn't recognize the other clergy that's in the attendance, and that's Bishop Gerald Concanis, Father Bayou de Santos, Father Richard Boyle. Father Chris Corberly, Father East Justin Whitehead, and Father Dennis Arnold. Please give them a round of applause too. They make our diocese strong. Well, I told you it's kind of how warm up here, but I told you we'd get out of here within an hour, right? <laughs> Are we close to that? Because we have to go to church now. Yeah. We have to go to Santa Cruz, Saint, excuse me, the cathedral, and do the procession there. So on behalf of the city of Tucson, City Manager, and us, we want to thank you for being here. Jim Ross, I thank you so much for your <laughs> thinking about 30 years ago, putting this vision, and now we're reliving it again. And so there'll be a video. I want to thank Lady Barsuto, who's our videographer for the City of Tucson. Please give her a round of applause. Yay! She's always helping us out. And this is being tied into what you're going to be doing in Italy. So we're going to have a historical piece here today. So thank you all, and thank all the leadership from the Knights of Columbus who have been here strongly and always been here for our community. God bless you all, and see you at 10 o'clock at the cathedral, right? <laughs>